Hi everyone, my name is Veronica. I am a professional makeup artist based here in Las Vegas. I'm also the business manager for Space and K Apothecary in Nordstrom's at Fashion Show Mall. So I wanted to create this video to show you guys what I do when I don't know what to do for a look, I don't know, to go to work. So I kind of pulled this look together. It's my go-to look. It's a little bit different because I decided to try some new eyeliner. So usually I don't use the green eyeliner, but today was an exception. You could always replace this look with a black or brown eyeliner, whatever you favor. But today's look is my go-to natural, but also glam makeup look. If you're interested in learning how I got this look and what products I use, keep on watching. Also, if this is your first time, please, I would love for you to subscribe, comment down below, and like this video so that I could continue making more videos just like this one. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do um, after your skincare, of course, is I'm going to use a primer. The one I'm going to be using today is by By Terry. It's a sunscreen SPF primer. Um, I really like this one because not only does it protect your skin, but it primes your skin as well, and it gives you a really beautiful kind of velvet matte finish. Um, like anything else, though, you don't want to use this as your primary sunscreen just because it's not going to give you enough protection from the sun. But it is a really nice product to have to act as a supplement on top of your existing sunscreen. I also don't really like to use a lot of primer. Um, one, because I feel like it kind of leaves the door open for product to pill on it and um, foundation to roll. So I just kind of focus it in the center of the face where product um, tends to crease, move around, where your pores tend to be bigger. So that's where I kind of focus the primer. I don't put a lot on, like literally the size of a pea, if not smaller in those areas. Yeah, I just kind of focus that in the center of my face. After that, I am going to use, let me get my little palette here, a foundation by Kevin O'Quan. And I feel like this foundation doesn't get the credit that like a lot of other foundations get at Nordstrom's. Um, I feel like a lot of people sleep on this foundation or don't even really ask for it too much because I think it's they don't know about it. And I really love it because it actually reminds me of a more user-friendly version of the Kevin Aquan Sensual Skin Enhancer, which I'm pretty sure a lot of you have heard of, but it's the foundations that come in a little pot that can be used for a variety of things. A lot of makeup artists tend to use it. Um, but the foundation I'm gonna use is the Skin Illuminating Etherealist Foundation. And I love this because it gives you great coverage, but just gives you a really natural skin-like finish. So let's see if this color is good. I kind of just grabbed it off the gondola and hoped for the best. And to be honest, I've only used this a couple of times on actual clients. I haven't used it for myself um, on like a day-to-day -day thing. So this is gonna be kind of a test wear, a wear test for this foundation for myself because I'm gonna wear it throughout the day. And I'm gonna do like little, um, you know, I guess checkups to let you guys know how it wears and if it actually did stay on throughout the day. So far, it's looking pretty good. So I just kind of like to dot the foundation over my face and then blend it out. So I got this Shiseido brush from a tester unit, believe it or not, but I'm not sure if it's supposed to be this short, but I love it and it it works really good in terms of buffing color out. But um, I like how small it is too, so you can really get into like the crevices. But yeah, check out that finish. I'll get closer for you guys to see. But it has a very beautiful like skin-like finish and that's what I really love about this foundation. You only need a little bit. It's just really natural, but gives you the coverage that most people want. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. 
And to be honest, when I'm in a rush, this is how I kind of do my foundation. I'm using another half of pump because I kind of want some coverage today. I came into work um, with no makeup on and everyone's like asking me, are you okay? Is everything all right? I'm like, girl, I just don't have makeup on, okay? So what I do when I'm in a rush, honestly, I literally take a brush, just spread it across my face, grab a beauty blender and tap out the streaks and you're pretty much good. Pick up the last of that. I feel like the color is pretty good, yeah. Oh, did I tell you what the color was? So the color that I'm using is actually medium EF7. So that is the color that I have on right now. All right, perfect. It's funny because this is actually my very first video for work and I didn't even know that they had like a little filming room here at work. So when I found out they had a little filming room, I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna do videos and review and do tutorials on all the makeup. So now I'm gonna use a concealer by By Terry. It's called the Terribly Don Solis Concealer. This concealer, I've Again, never really tried on myself, but I've heard so many good things. I mean, if you guys aren't familiar with By Terry, By Terry used to be the, I believe, the beauty director for Yves Saint Laurent Cosmetics, and she invented the Touche Clot. The infamous Touche Clot that everyone goes to YSL to get. She invented that, and she decided to start her own brand. She was actually one of the, I feel like she was one of the pioneers because I've known of By Terry many years ago when I used to work at Space and K in New York City. And I feel like she was one of the first brands to use like stem cell um, technology in all of her products. So the entire line is infused with this rose stem cell technology that helps with anti-aging, the texture of your skin. It has like all these skincare benefits and it's infused in every single product from her eyeliners to her blush to her powders to her foundations, everything. So it's a really great line to get into for people that have anti-aging concerns. And because of that, I feel like the product lays beautifully. It looks seamless. It makes your skin look glowy and lit from within. So yeah, I'm using the concealer. I've, again, never personally tried this on myself. I've only used it on clients, um, but I'm excited to use it because I've heard amazing things. So again, I just kind of get the color on, bust out my beauty blender, and tap it. So I don't dip it into the product. I literally use the beauty blender just to blend. And a lot of people like literally dip it into the product, and I feel like if you do it that way, you're going to waste a lot of product as well. So I just kind of like get those darker areas. I'm, view I'm actually using a very small amount. It looks like a lot though, but I promise you, it's not that much. It's a very thin layer of concealer. And the color that I'm using is Medium Peach 4. So I tend to like concealers that have like a peachy undertone because of those, um, obviously the peachy uh, tones. So if you didn't know, orange cancels out blues, any kind of cool color. Um, under your eyes and they neutralize and help diminish dark circles. And you know what? A lot of, um, of my clients, a lot of customers over the years, I feel like every time they use a foundation or when I'm putting foundation on them, they feel like it's too light for them. But honestly, the best way to match is like go into your chest area because that's where sun tends to hit you and you should be like one color throughout. I feel like that's the best. So if you're tan throughout your body, Try to find a foundation that matches into your tan. I hate when I have a client or a customer coming in and they tan their face, but not their body. I don't understand why, but I've had customers come in where they'll ask for a shade that's like three shades darker than their natural skin tone. And I'm like, but you're not tan. I always say tan first, then get your foundation to match whatever color that you've tanned to instead of the opposite. So. This is the finish. I've put no powder on. Let me zoom in. As you can see, there's it's not full coverage. It's I want to say it's like a medium, like a true medium coverage. So now I'm going to set using a powder. Um, I'm using the Kevin Aquan Loose Powder. And I love it because it comes with a puff. And it has like a little trap door. 
so the powder doesn't get everywhere like most loose powders. So there's like a little door here that closes securely and prevents the powder from flying all over the place. I like to take a puff like this. Laura Mercy has a beautiful one that works very well. And I'm only taking a small amount. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set right on that inner corner of my eye. And then what I also do is I kind of see how where the makeup's starting to crease on my lid. I bring the foundation up onto my lid to kind of get it ready for the eyeshadow. I feel that when you put foundation um, on your eyelids, unless you have really oily eyelids, if you have oily eyelids, I suggest using an eyeshadow primer um, and then doing this technique. But I feel like it evens everything out from your skin all the way over your eyelid. And then you set it with a little powder. Make sure to blend it out first before you set because you don't want to set that crease. It creates a, the perfect surface for eyeshadows to blend and to be applied on. So with the powder, I'm not shaking it out. I'm literally closing, I'm closing it like this. I flip it, shake it a little bit, then open it, and then I use whatever the residue is on the top of the container. I don't dip it directly into the powder. I feel like that's powder overkill. And I just kind of touch those areas where there's a lot of movement. So around my nose, my mouth, my eyes, places like that. Because I don't want to kind of disrupt that beautiful finish that the Kevin Aquan foundation gave me. You absolutely could put a lot of powder on if that's your shtick. I mean, I, be I guess like the biggest benefit of that is the fact that it will really set and lock your foundation in. And if you are having a very like, you know, if you have a strenuous job or you're running around and you're sweating or you tend to be super oily, then I would probably consider doing that. But for someone like me, I'm very dry. Um, I'm 41. I don't have 20 year old skin anymore like I used to. So I like to have a little bit of radiance in my skin um, and I want it to look like skin, but I do want it to last a long time. So I do use a little bit of powder. Some people hate powder. If you don't like powder, then don't use powder. You know your skin better than I do. But for me, I like to put powder in just those areas and I move my face a lot. I'm very, I have a lot of expression in my face when I talk and um, makeup loves to crease on me. With that said, I am going to start the bronzing process. So when you work with the foundation, foundations blank you out. They make you look like a piece of paper. And a lot of people tend to feel like, oh my God, I feel so white. I mean, if you think about it, you're taking the predominant color of your complexion and then putting it all over your face and blanking out all of those natural undertones. So like those red tones, like the, uh, the blue tones, the yellow tones, whatever tones you're trying to cancel out, you're literally blanking that out, finding the predominant color and then bringing back the life. So bronzer should be your best friend if you want your look to be more natural and you want it to kind of bring you back to that very like sun-kissed um lively skin look so with that said i'm using the kevin aquan this is the neo bronzer in sunrise light so what i love let me show you up close but what i love about it is that it gradiates so it goes from like shimmery to matte. Do you see that? So it goes from shimmer to a matte finish and you have a lot of play that you can do with this gradation. So if you don't want shimmer, you don't you could stay away from that side of the bronzer and just leave it alone and give you a matte look or you can stay on this side and just go completely matte or you can just mix everything together and get like a beautiful kind of like glowy bronze look. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna mix everything together and I'm using this beautiful brush by By Terry. It is such a luxe brush. It feels substantial. It just, it feels very luxurious. And I love this brush. And what you're gonna do is I like to start right underneath the cheekbone. Um, if you think about it, when you're loading your brush, let me show you. When you're loading your brush like this, you're fully loaded. 
So wherever you place this on your face, you're going to get the most color payoff. What I like to start with, personally, is underneath the cheekbone. So this part gets the most, con like, bronzer, because technically we're not, this isn't a contour, it's a bronzer. But if you're in a rush, when push comes to shove, girl, this is what you do. So you go, take that brush, start under the cheekbone, go around your hairline, and this is a very, I'm using the light color because I don't want to be over the top bronze. And that could be a look for another video. But this, again, is the look that I go for when I'm kind of want to go out, the, like run out the door and give you like a great glam work look. I mean, I work in cosmetics. I'm surrounded by super glam makeup artists. People expect me to have a glam look when working in the beauty section at Nordstrom. So I don't want to be overly natural, if that makes sense. Like, this is not a look I would wear to, like, the farmer's market to get tomatoes, girl. You know what I mean? This is, like, I'm using makeup, and I'm using product, and I like to be glam. And, but I don't want to be crazy, you know? I don't want to look overdone. So I'm going underneath the jawline, and then I'm bringing it down. And I do this because this is where sun doesn't hit your face. And you want to kind of, br like, not brighten, but you want to warm up those areas because sun doesn't hit those areas. Um, this part of your neck tends to be lighter than everything else. So I kind of go underneath and then brush it down to kind of blend that into your chest area. So as you can see, I don't look as flat as I did. You know what I mean? Ugh, it is hot in here, girl. Next video, I'm getting a fan, and it's going to be the crazy and love video up in here, okay? So I'm going into just the matte shade, and I'm just going to go right there, just to give me a little bit more. Okay, so after I'm done with foundation, concealer, and bronzing, actually, you know what? I forgot blush. All right, let me come back. Okay, so I'm back. I forgot a blush. Am I crazy? When I went downstairs back into the department, I literally looked at myself in the mirror and asked a couple people if I should go bronzer. And of course, they said yes. So, I'm going to go a little darker. So, I grabbed the Dusk Medium Neo Bronzer, which is one shade lighter. It's the medium one. There's a deep, so there's a light, medium, deep. And I am going to deepen this bronze a little bit. Oh yes. Oh, oh yes. That definitely deepened the bronze. I love this brush. It is so soft. Does that look too much? No, I think it looks cute. Like I said earlier, I love that you could customize on this um, bronzer. So if you feel like, oh, it's a little dark, I'm gonna move it over a little bit to the lighter side. And if I want it more intense, I can go into the darker side. So it's really cool because you're getting like three shades of bronzer in one small little compact. So, yes. That looks cute. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, so now we're going to do a little bit of contouring, and I'm going to use the infamous Kevin Aquan Sculpting Powder in Medium. So this, guys, is what started contouring, I feel, like from the 90s. So if you guys didn't know who Kevin O'Quan was, Kevin O'Quan was a hum like a huge celebrity makeup artist from the 90s. And he was famous for like sculpting and contouring people's faces and literally making people look different than how they originally looked like. And he was just a magician with his cosmetics. So this is the original color that started it all. And it is like the perfect tone of contour because it's like a cool grayish taupe. It mimics like a shadow like perfectly. So I'm taking a um, a fluffy eyeshadow brush, tapping off extra, and then what I'm gonna do, I'm trying to get in close, I'm gonna contour my nose. I start, the way I do it, I start up at my brow and I come down to the side of like my nostril. You see that? So I do that. And I start ever so lightly 
you don't want to, you know, swirl your brush into the uh, contour shade. Literally small, thin layers, like so. And then I kind of go around my nostril. But you want to be light-handed with this. Please do not go heavy-handed with this. The worst is when you have a gray streak on the sides of your nose or underneath your cheekbone. It's the worst. And sometimes to make it even less contoury, I mix it with a bit of a bronzer. So I'm going to use the light bronzer that I put on earlier and I'm going to mix it together with that medium. But see what it's doing to my nose, okay? Hello contour, my best friend. Look at that. Hello. And you can really take it to like another level. I mean drag queens like literally bring it to a point. But this is... A beauty look so we're gonna keep it as natural as possible I'm not adding more color I'm literally just blending out those kind of diffuse lines that you create when you contour so now what I'm gonna do I'm going to I'm gonna use this little blush brush and I'm going back into that medium shade and I'm just gonna do a slight contour underneath the bronzer so the bronzer should be more diffused it should be that's why you use see let me show you the difference so when you use a brush like this versus a brush like this why would you use different brushes so first of all this is good for a bronzer because it's bigger, it's fluffier, it's super soft you're going to diffuse that color and you're gonna get a more airbrush like lighter application of product. So this is great for like loose powders, for bronzers, for covering a large area of your face. This is good. I mean, I love this shape of this brush just because it's like an almost like an egg and it like comes to a point, it tapers to a point. So this is a very multi-purpose brush. You can use it as a blush brush, you can use it as a highlighter brush, you can use it as a contour brush. I love brushes this size that kind of are tapered versus this one, how it's tapered flatter to cover more area on your face. So with that said, this brush is really good for contouring right in those little pockets. So right there, and I'm literally tapping like don't swirl tap and then i tap off the extra because you want it to look like a shadow you know that's what contouring is it should look like lines in your face it should look like a shadow so i'm just gonna get i have a big old forehead so we're gonna have to contour that okay notice how even my applications change so instead of like really buffing it out with the bigger brush i'm placing the color so i'm literally sculpting i'm literally going right underneath that jawline and i'm just putting a touch of a shadow and that's what contouring is the way contouring should look in a makeup application it should literally gradiate so it should go from like contour to bronzer to your skin it shouldn't be like like either muddy and mixed all together or it shouldn't have definite lines on the face, if you know what I mean. So it should gradiate from that shadow into a nice bronzy, sun-kissed look into your natural skin. Ideally, for me, that's how I like to create a really beautiful like, beauty look. So with that said, we're moving on to blush. I'm going to use the Kevin Aquan Rose Cliff Blush. I love it. Again, gradation. You have like this highlightery gold like vibe here on the left hand side so you can give it a, a bit of a shimmery texture um, and in the middle it's slightly more coral and then on the far right it's going to give you more of like a rose color so what I do is I mix the darker and the middle color so the corally and the rose color and I'm just going to place this in a circular motion just like kind of up high but not too high, like a highlighter, but not too low like the bronzer. So it should be like in between. Again, it should look like a flush of color and that's what blush is mimicking. And then what I like to do, I learned this trick from Bobby Brown when I had a training in New York, is they like to use two blushes. So they like to use like a muted, more like softer blush initially on the cheek and then pop it with a bright color. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the middle color and mix it with that gold, like golden highlighter color and I'm just gonna go right on the apples of my cheeks just to give my skin a little illuminosity and to give it that pop. Let you guys take a look. From there, we are done with complexion. Usually I like to put a setting spray during this moment, but I forgot it. 
I'll do it in the next video, and that's fine because it's hot in here in this room. So I feel like I don't even need a setting spray. So now I'm going to start my eyebrows. So with my eyebrows, the way I like to do them, and to kind of give it a softer look versus like using a gel brow or just a straight pencil, I like to use a powder. So I'm using Anastasia in Ebony. So I'm using the Duo Brow Powder. Again, it has two different shades of darker kind of brown so that you could customize. And I'm using this Bobbi Brown Brow Definer Brush. And it has like a little spoolie on the end. So what I like to do, I'm gonna zoom in so you can really see. I like to take the brush and literally create like a line. And that kind of creates that definition and I go really light at first, and then I build upon it. So then I take the brush, and without adding color to it, I literally take that color that I place at the bottom, and I pull it up into the brow. And then I run it through my entire brow to kind of fill it in. And if you feel like you've put too much product, that's what the spoolie is for. So you just turn it and kind of brush it through. But I, what I want to do is I want the bottom to be, the bottom of my brow here to be nice and sharp. And then I want it to kind of diffuse as it goes up. So just like that. Is it me or does it look a little red? Hmm, it's okay, I'll make it work. So then what I do after I use um, a powder is I'm going to go in with this. This is the Kevin Aquan Dark Brunette Precision Brow Pencil. So I love it because look how thin and small that lead is. So what you can do with that is you can literally go in and kind of fill in where the brush missed. So I just like to kind of take it right I even like lift my brow like that so I see where the hairs are and I kind of fill that in. And I love how thin the lead is. So you get a really defined brow. And listen, I know according to certain fashion magazines that thin brows are in, uh, no, I'm sorry. They'll never be in in my book, okay? Unless you naturally have thin brows Please do not go around starting to pluck your brows like we're back in the 90s, you know what I mean? So I'm just kind of taking that brush and I'm like diffusing and kind of blending the powder and the pencil together. So let me do the other side. All right, so brows are done. I mean, to be honest, they're a little red. I'm not sure if you can see that, but I used ebony and I assumed that it would have been like a dark, cooler brown, but it's kind of coming off a little on the redder side. So we'll see how it wears throughout the day. And if not, next time I'll try granite because granite was a little bit more like natural black. Okay, so with that said, we're on to eyes. So let me get my brushes for my eyes. So what I'm gonna do, I am using this newish palette from Kevin Aquan. It's called the Something Nude Eyeshadow Palette. But this is it. It comes with like literally any and every color that you need um, for like every day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this brush. This is a MAC brush. I, I can't read it because the number rubbed off, but I will list every and all products I'm using today um, in the description box below. But I'm going to use, let's see, this color called Nude. So this color here, I'm going to use this everywhere, all over my lid. I'm just going to take this bigger brush. I'm putting it all the way up into the brow on both sides. And that's, again, going to continue to blank out the eye and to create more contrast between all the colors. See? So I kind of... I mean, some people just do it like this and give you, and it will serve like a brow look, but um, I'm gonna go now into this color, which is called Brick. It's called Brick. So this color here. 
same brush and with this I'm gonna try and just put it right into the socket of my eye so when you go when you touch your eye feel for the bone and right underneath that bone is where you want to place the color so that's what I'm gonna do and again why am I choosing this brush instead of a smaller brush because I want to diffuse that color I don't want it to be like perfect you know I want it to look blown out but this time, instead of like with the lighter color, I'm not going everywhere. I'm just staying underneath that brow bone. And if you're like a natural girl, like you could literally just stop here and put some mascara on and you're done. But I want to take advantage of this beautiful palette because I think it has so many beautiful colors. But see, technically that could be it if you want. And I'm just gonna darken. And you know what, like even with like one eyeshadow, you can make it look like you're wearing different colors by putting, by layering the color over and over on top of itself. So like I just did a wash of color into the crease and then I'll keep packing it on the outer corner so it looks darker. But it's really not darker, you just add more pigment. But yeah, this is where I'm gonna switch into a smaller version of that brush. I believe this brush is um, MAC 224. And I'm gonna go into, let's try this purpley color. Okay, so I think it's just called Sangria. So it's this one here. It's like a purple brown. So this, I'm gonna use a smaller brush and I'm gonna go underneath that crease color and I'm going to continue to gradiate. So notice it's light, started light all over, medium color in the crease, and then I, with a smaller brush, I'm going underneath that second color. What was it called? Brick. And I'm focusing it on the outer corner of my eye. So right here, and then I'm fading it towards the inner, inside part. We have a little bit more of an intense eye. For a lot of people, this would probably be a night eye. For me, it's going to the grocery eye. <laughs> no, but this is like an easy glam look for work. You know what I mean? So you can see, I, I kind of go in like circles, and then when I feel like it's blended, I'll push it through. So circles, push it through. To make it fast and easy smoky eye, I'm using this NARS like kind of like a pencil brush. Let me see if I can focus, so that. Going back into that color, um, Sangria, and I'm just gonna go right along the lash line, but focusing it on the outer corner. And that's it, literally that could be it. But, you know, with me, I could just keep going and going and going. So, I've been wanting to play around with these Hourglass eyeliners. They just came out a couple days ago, and they're beautiful colors. Look at that green. How pretty is that green? It's so gorgeous. And it's like this, and these twists. You don't have to sharpen it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm taking this tiny little brush from Chanel. And I'm going to use it to smudge this eyeliner. See, this is why I like pencils like this, because you can just throw it on and then use a small brush to um, sharpen it. So I'm literally just taking this green, I'm a little going a little hard on it because I want it to really show. Then, because it's a really easy blendable gel texture, I'm going to pull it with a clean brush out and across my eyelid. Can you see that? How easy was that? Put the pencil, don't try to make the shape with the pencil. Put the product on, then take a small brush with no color on it and run it across your eyelid and then pull it out. And then you instantly have, boom, a really cool winged eyeliner. So I'll do it again on this side. Literally, it took like, what, 10 seconds, 20 seconds to do that? So I'm just going to place this color, and because it's so smooth and soft, it's so easy. I'm not going all the way across. I'm literally focusing it. It's almost like I'm trying to create like a wedge. So making it thick and then bringing it to the middle of my eye just like that. Then I'm going to take the small brush. I'm going to turn it to its side, and then I'm going to pull it out and then across. And if you want to intensify it, because you feel like you've blended it out too much, take your pencil again and just go right over it because you've already created 
the shape. So all you're doing is kind of intensifying the color. See? How pretty is this green? You know, it is so hard to find a green eyeliner that isn't too pastel-y or too blue or just, just, I want like a green, like a nice, pretty green. I'm still yet to find like a nice emerald green or like a Kelly green, like a fun, funky, true, true green. I mean, I like this green because it's very wearable. Like it's not crazy. It's beautiful. I love it. A plus, A plus on those hourglass eyeliners. I'm living for them. Okay, we're almost done. We are on uh, the home stretch, girl. And I swear to you, once you get the hang of this, I promise it isn't that intense. I know I've been talking for like almost an hour now, I guess. I've been sitting here filming this and I got a little ahead of myself, but like, I promise you, once you get these techniques down, it will be like, boom, like you can do it very fast. So this is my best friend. I'm Asian. I have very thin, very fine, very straight eyelashes. So this is your best friend. So what is unique about it, and I find, especially when you first get it and it's fresh, when you curl, you don't have to press very hard. You literally just press it ever so lightly and your lashes like flip up and they just do amazing things. So I'm gonna show you my lashes without curl, okay? Right? So what I do is I get a good press, I open it, I tilt it in, and then I pump it. And then I let go. Hello, can we talk about it? How cute is just curling your lashes? People do not put enough emphasis on lash curling. Like they are all focused on the mascara, but literally all you really need to do is curl your lashes and that makes every and all mascaras work amazing. Let's do the other one. I know it's scary at first, but I swear you'll get the hang of it. And P.S. I had shorter, stubbier lashes in this but I was introduced to New Lash, which is a lash growing serum, and it is amazing. I literally bought three tubes of it, cause I gagged. Look, hello. I wish I showed, I can show you guys how my lashes look before. Literally, I, I could barely curl them cause there was nothing to curl. But because of that lash serum, I've been using for about two months now, and it is worth the price of it. You just have to be patient and it will come. I promise you, I promise you, but look. Look at that curl. So good. And P.S. This is three years old, this lash curler. I know Kevin Aquan people will be mad at me because they say you want to change it every six months, three to six months. Girl, I've had mine for three years and she's still curling. She's still working. Okay. With that said, I'm going to put some mascara on. Where's my mascara? Okay. So if you are like me and have very fine, very straight, very hard to hold a curl eyelash, this is the Kevin Aquan Volume Mascara. It has like a cult following. I don't have the brush on it because we have to cut the brushes off here at Nordstrom's, but it has a small, tiny brush. If I get a picture of it, I will put it in the video, but it is a tiny little brush that grabs every little hair on your lids and literally amplifies it. It's amazing. I love it. But we are going to put this on, and then not only that, but... It is a tubing mascara. So if you're not familiar what tubing mascaras are, it creates, it coats, the mascara coats your lashes and then it dries down and creates tubes around each and individual hair. So what are the benefits of that? You, they become water resistant. So they don't, it doesn't smudge. It, I, b believe me, it does not smudge. If you feel like this isn't powerful enough for your top lashes, use it as your bottom lash because your bottom lashes will not smudge. So, it, and the brush is small anyway, and I know people that have huge lashes and they love their like Dior show, they like bigger brushes. Use that and then use this underneath and I'm, I'm telling you, it's amazing. I freaking love it. So I'm gonna use this mascara on right now on my freshly curled lashes. So this is my technique that I like to use. I take the tip of the wand, I go back and forth into my lash, and what that does is that you're depositing the product into the root, then I flip it and pull it up. So I do like a shimmy pull. So I shimmy it, then I pull like that. Um, hello. 
<gasps> Can we talk about this? I mean, look at that. And this is not even with the actual brush. This is a disposable wand that doesn't even give the formula the life that it deserves. But look, and look what, what new lash has done. It's given me length. Look how long my lashes are. In, in Asia, this is long. For Asians out there, these are long lashes. I'm sorry, but they, it is. Okay? And this is one coat. You could build this. You could keep building it and get it, like, super dramatic. Um, hello, can we talk about that? Um, how cute. How cute. I'm putting another coat because I'm, like, loving it. I'm loving this formula. It's so good. Let's do one more coat and see what happens to her if she, if she could stand on her own. Because I know some of y'all out there like your false lashes. And I get it. I used to wear lashes every single day. Like, I could not leave the house without false lashes. But thanks to New Lash and this mascara and lash curler, it's giving. So, for the second coat, I don't like to go do the first... What I did in the first uh, application is go through the root with the tip. Because then it will tend to clump. Because you've already applied it there. I'm just kind of adding that second layer, you know? So nice. Again, so for the bottom, I don't re-dip. Just use whatever's at the bottom. Go back and forth like I, like I told you, and then pull it through. And you don't want it to compete with the top, so just keep it cute and simple. I'm not re-dipping. And you can take the tip of the wand and just pull through those lashes, okay? This is my go-to look. I'm just gonna throw on a lip, and I'm exci so excited because I am using the new Hourglass Lips. Which one to use? I think I'm gonna use this one. So this one is called Slip, but this is it here. And look how juicy. I wish you can see how juicy that lip is, and I'm all about it. I'm all about the JLo lip shine look. I have been forever. So when these came out, I saw how juicy they were. I was like, oh, that's my kind of lip product. So I'm using Slip, which is kind of like a nude. I'll do a swatch next to that liner. Oh, oh, can we see how creamy that is? It like melted. It was like butter, literally butter. Okay, so let's try her. I'm kind of excited. This is the first time I've tried this. Butter, guys. It literally feels like butter. So, so beautiful. Girl, my phone isn't recognizing my face. She doesn't even know who she is. Let me take my hair down and get ready for the day. I'm gonna do check-ins throughout the day and let you guys know how this foundation wears so far under these lights and it being hot up in here. It looks good. It looks like my skin. I love it. I'm not sure about these brows. These brows are a little bit red. But we will do updates on that. I was going to put lashes on, but I don't think so. I'm, like, loving the mascara. It's giving me a look. So I will get back with you guys with the update on this foundation. Okay, so it's been a couple hours since I put on the foundation, and it looks really nice. I'm going to go in the spotlight. I think it looks so natural. Hmm. So, Shamim, what do you think of this foundation that I have on? Let me know. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. You're not even looking at my foundation. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I'll go on the light. Wait, where's... Of course, it's very beautiful. Look at that. Woo! Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Shamim approves. Which... What do you think of my foundation? I like it because you can see your freckles through your skin. Oh. It looks very skin-like, very light. Okay. It matches you. I love it. All right. No. Perfect. So you like it? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks, Esther. You're welcome. Okay, guys. So <clears throat> it is the end of the day. It is almost 7 p.m. My shift is almost over, and I wanted to kind of assess the situation with my makeup. So let's take a look here. I'm going to zoom you guys in to what I'm seeing here. And honestly, I love this foundation. I think it's the great foundation to use if you just want a natural 
skin-like look. So as you can see, you can still see my freckles. Nothing's really gathered or creased or done anything weird on my face. I like the fact that um, throughout the day, the oil from my, from my skin actually kind of mixed in with the foundation and made it look even more natural. I've gotten so many compliments today about like, what is on your skin? What foundation are you using? It looks so natural, but it also looks pulled together, which is something that I really enjoy. Um, obviously the eye makeup is still there, still super vibrant. It didn't um, smudge or move on my eyes. Um, obviously I re reapplied the lip color it's a glossy color, so generally speaking, any kind of like lip gloss or emollient lipstick or anything that has like a shine on your lip is generally not going to stay on all day. Um, but I kind of love this formula from Hourglass um, so much so that it's almost like a lip balm. Like if you are somebody looking for like a tinted lip balm, I think this would be a really good choice for you. Um, but besides that, I'm loving everything. Yeah, I mean, I used the volumizing mascara under my eyes, and like I said earlier, there is nothing, no smudging, no flaking, no nothing. So definitely try the Kevin Aquan Volume Mascara. Again, everything that I've used will be linked down below for you to purchase, or if you wanted to learn more about the products, um, everything will be there in the description box. I hope you guys like this video. Please let me know what you think about it. Um, this is my first video um, that I'm doing for Nordstrom's and for um, for me to reach out to my customers and to um, anyone interested in learning products that Space and K Apothecary or Nordstrom's in general has to offer. So I hope to see you in the next one and you guys have a good one. Bye.